Hi guys and welcome back to another Wardle Road episode. So today we're on episode 12 of the Brake Van Diaries and the day I'm actually filming this is the same day that episode 11 goes up so I wouldn't have been able to see any of your comments or feedback regarding that episode uh, probably until the next one. My only worry was with episode 11 when editing it, I mean I, I enjoyed obviously filming and doing it but I was a bit worried that maybe the episode may have come across a bit boring so hopefully we'll try and do something a little bit more interesting today. But saying that, uh, today's main task is going to be doing the brackets on this side, removing this piece of wood, uh, sorting all these brackets out and just basically getting as much done as I can um, while the weather's okay because the forecast isn't looking too good for the rest of the week. You may also notice behind me we have this lovely scaffold tower. Now I picked this up uh, a couple of days ago basically uh, for the reason being it means I can actually get easier access to uh, the ducats and the cladding on this side rather than uh, leaning up against it with a ladder which became a bit of a pain and I wish I'd actually got this uh, for when we did the roof uh, as it had made access uh, a little bit easier as well. But yeah this is going to be super useful, uh, it's not going to be just for this project it's going to be for other projects around the railway as well uh, but it's something that I definitely felt um, not as an investment as such, but it was definitely definitely something I feel I could be uh, using over the next next few projects. So yeah, enough of me rambling. Let's get into today's video. Right, so as you've seen from the intro there, uh, today is going to be tackling this side of the brackets and running boards. Now, you remember from a few episodes ago, uh, I said this was the last piece of wood to be removed, and I mean, yeah, it, st it still is, but I've got my trusty uh, battery powered saw, so I'm going to get this piece off and then we're going to get cracking on the brackets. So sit back and enjoy these time lapses. Right, so we're back in the workshop now where, as you've seen last episode, we were working on the door. Now, regarding the door, when I was uh, trying to get some of the paint off the other side, some of the paint and the undercoat was quite thick. And even with um, really, really heavy duty sandpaper on the uh, sander, 
I still couldn't get it off. So I nipped over to the other workshop and grabbed some of this super strip. Um, and I'll show you what it's been doing on the door in a second. But I thought while we've got it, um, we may as well get some of that on top of the uh, underside of the vents as well. So it's pretty simple. It's just a gel that you kind of massage, you massage into the paint. Right, so here's how the other side of the door is looking at the moment. This is the unpainted side, obviously. And as I mentioned in the last clip, some of the paint and the undercoat was extremely thick, especially like this area here, uh, around the door handle as well. Uh, it, even with the sander, it was, it was struggling to, to come off. So what I've done is, about two and a half hours ago, I put some of the uh, paint stripper on here. And already I'm noticing that it's starting to work. As you see here, just by scratching away, the uh, paint and the undercoat is starting to uh, remove itself, which is nice. So what I'm gonna do is leave that for a little bit longer and then when we come back to look at the vents later on, hopefully this should all pretty much wipe off, I'm, I'm hoping anyway. So what we'll do now is nip back over to the brake van. Right, so you might be able to see in front of us here, all the brackets have now had their coat of Hydra 80. They've also been, obviously before that, angle grinded back with a wire brush. But now we've got to this stage, uh, a few of them have already started to go uh, dry, sort of dry to the touch if you like, which means we're now ready to get a couple of coats of the smooth black handwrite paint, which we used on the other brackets. And then from that, we should be able to get some running boards on. So what I'm gonna do now before it looks like it's gonna rain, uh, is just to get a coat down uh, of the black hand white paint and yeah we'll go from there. Right, so as you can see, all the brackets are now painted in the hammerite black paint. Obviously, we can't put any running boards on at the moment as it, the paint's still drying. Uh, it's probably gonna take an hour or so to get it uh, where the, the paint or anything's no longer sticky. So we're gonna leave them for a little bit. And while I go and get some running boards uh, lifted up and brought down to the brake van, uh, we'll go and have a look at how the paint strip is done on the door and the bottom of the air vent. So I will see you in the workshop. Right, so gloves on for this one. These are a little bit more messy than the door. Uh, the paint on these are actually coming off with relative ease. As you'll see here, it's just starting to peel, or, peel off and break away. There's also a fair amount of rust on this as well. So again, it's gonna need a little bit of sanding, but you can already see the base silver color starting to come through on both of them, which is really good. So obviously once these are tidied up, um, this one needs straightening out a little bit, but then just a little coat of paint. Um, a bit of hammer right, a coat of paint and they'll be good to, to be reinstalled. So this will be another side project while I'm getting on with other things, perhaps when the weather's not as good, I'll come in here and carry on working on these. But yeah, let's get back to the brake van. 
Right, so you join me on, I think the right term, the veranda, the uh, bit outside the door of the brake van. And here is the concrete slabs which, are, which were hidden originally under the uh, decking boards. Now, I'm not sure what the design reason was or whether it was just a cost thing, but basically to hold the decking boards down, they had a wooden, uh, a wooden batten between these two concrete bits here, and then they'd fix the uh, decking boards to that and then that would all fit in as one piece. But then obviously if water gets down here, uh, the wood is never ever gonna dry out. So I wasn't really sure as to what the design plan was behind that. However, at Old Oak, I don't know about all depots uh, particularly, but when it comes to fixing things, I know on uh, Jim's brake van, which was also uh, down there, when their decking uh, sort of got uh, to a condition that wasn't worth repairing, they actually ended up taking it all up and concreting uh, this section here and then concreting the floor back up uh, to the original level. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It might upset a few people, but uh, if I'm following the whole, uh, I mean, it was that old, old oak anyway, so this is something that they would have done had it, had it still been there uh, today. Um, so what I'm going to do, and obviously I need to work on the door as well, and this is a bit of a trip hazard because you can quite easily get your foot caught uh, in between this gap. So what I want to do is clean out this section here, uh, de-weed the section along this side here, and then basically fill it up with concrete but to this uh, the start like the sort of base level if you like and then I won't bring it up till this level until we've done the wooden uh, foot pieces at each end and sorted out the rest of this but this wood here this is all fine at the moment uh, the other end is going to be a little bit more tricky but this end can definitely be done and once this is in it means I won't trip up over this uh, this will all take care of itself and I won't ever have to worry about uh, rotting decking boards or anything up here and it means I can work on the door frame without as I say tripping over. So what I'm going to do now is nip down to uh, the bottom of the brake van and let's have a look at mixing some concrete. Something I never thought I'd be saying I'd be doing on a brake van renovation series. However, yeah, let's get to it. Right, so as you saw from that time lapse, managed to get the concrete powder in and then got some water on it. Now it says on the instructions that in two hours time I have to re-water it. Uh, so I'm gonna set a time on my phone and come back here in a couple of hours time. But already, I mean, it's only been what, 10, 15 minutes since I put it down. And it's already going very, very hard, which is fantastic. Remember, of course, to bring this concrete level up to what it should be, uh, if you include obviously where the decking would be as well, we've got, still got to go another another inch or so uh, thick uh, of a concrete base. So this doesn't need to be super neat because there's only going to be more concrete on top of this. You, know, you may have seen in the time lapses, I used a piece of wood just to stop off the uh, concrete powder at each end. Uh, and that's just to prevent uh, any of it going down uh, onto the chassis or anything underneath. And basically when it comes to uh, filling this whole area with concrete, I'm going to build a, lot, a little wooden frame uh, just to match the height of this around the edges. So then when we come along, we can basically fill this with powder uh, and make a nice new uh, raised concrete bed. So, so far, very happy with that. I also used a little bit that was, this is used, this used a pretty much a whole bag. And I also used a little bit uh, that was left over on uh, some repairs on the uh, concrete block just on the other side of this uh, railing here. But um, yeah, I'm going to obviously need to buy a lot more if I'm to do this at the other end and to raise it up as well. But uh, I think for now, uh, we'll probably come back in a couple of hours time and see how it's doing.
Right, so I'm happy to announce that all the running boards are now fitted uh, and cut to length and curved off uh, the ends uh, on both sides, on both levels. Now I still need to do uh, three of the metal plates uh, between the two boards, uh, one on this side and two on the other side, uh, which Malcolm from the engineering has very kindly sorted me out uh, with some extra bits of metal to uh, get that done. Now I heard your comments regarding this and using this on the edge as it'd be uh, slippery, uh, etc. Now, Charles has very kindly lent me his router. So once we've gone along here and got a curved edge, a couple of people are saying it might not actually need uh, the extra reinforcement. So we're gonna see how that turns out. Now, the only issue with this is that if I put that on there, the bolts, the, the bolts nearest uh, the edge here are all gonna have to come out as I go along. So I'm gonna have to take one out, go along a bit and put it back in to make sure uh, it, keeps, it keeps its position. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this goes way way too far past that. Now, I didn't want this metal to go to waste, so I was thinking, where would this be useful? And then I thought, why not reinforce the inside edge here? So what I'm going to do with this stuff instead is uh, along this edge, along this edge, around the front here, basically just reinforce the front of it where the axle box. So if this if this was to come off, or someone if you uh, inspecting this, taking the bottom half of it off and then you won't get it caught on the wood or anything and it won't, it won't dent or damage the wood. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it is not, it's, not a, it's not a very uh, rough surface, so, but the way I see it is if someone's got their foot stuck down there, then they, uh, they deserve to slip on it, to be honest with you, because there's no reason to be putting your toes uh, under the axle box there. So, yep, the plan for this is gonna be for that to sit around here. And the next thing you're gonna see me do is slowly go around with the router making the edges nice and curved. So I've got a test piece somewhere as well, which I'm gonna try out first, just to make sure it's cutting right. Uh, and then, yeah, we're gonna uh, do the whole lot, hopefully. Right, and that brings us to the end of another episode. Now you'd have seen from them time lapses, uh, we've got these boards virtually 99% complete. All that is required now is a nut another metal plate like this one on the other end and a metal joining piece at the top. Uh, and then a top coat of uh, black paint. This paint here is actually the paint I used that was the wrong color on the end panel. Uh, it actually makes a really good undercoat. So I'm pleased with that. You'd have also seen as well, uh, curving off the edges with the router. I also managed uh, to get the other side um, routed and um, uh, coated with some wood preserver, but that's all I've managed to have time to do today. As you see, that the sun's starting to go down already now. It's starting to get um, a little bit darker. So I think that's why I'm gonna leave it for this episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you've got any questions or any feedback, please leave them uh, in the comment section below. I'll put a link up here somewhere to the rest of the Brake Van playlist if you haven't watched already. And yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.